Hi friends, today I'm so excited to introduce Doris of ORTV, which stands for Overseas Radio and Television, a Taiwan-based organization. She is one of the most well-known teachers of English in, to Chinese people worldwide, and in Taiwan she's an absolute legend, arriving as a missionary in 1951. She's won countless awards since, including the inaugural Outstanding Women's Award from the Taiwan uh, National Women's League. And through it all, her humility, her kindness, her deep reverence for God remains, and I'm so excited that we have a chance to hear her testimony and pick her brains about some questions that were deep on my heart, including singleness, which was a part of her testimony, and definitely not the, the main part, but just part of it. I think is really inspiring for, for anyone, but also especially maybe if you are single and pursuing the Lord and just wondering, like, what's next? And also, for me personally, like, ORTV has impacted my family so much. My grandpa used ORTV to learn English, which really helps him in his career as a public servant and as a lawyer. And my parents actually attended Bible studies at ORTV, were married by an ORTV pastor, and they had a ceremony in ORTV as well. So I just really hope that you enjoy hearing from Doris. Doris is 96. She's been faithfully serving the Lord, and just her, how she talks about being committed to Christ is just, just so, so, so wonderful. So enjoy, and uh, here is Doris. Hi, Doris. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's so nice to be with you. How are you? I am well, thank you. Um, just for the Good listeners night. to provide some context, we were on with Doris and her assistant Rebecca just to test the audio today. Um, but then we thought, why not? Let's just let's just go and record the interview too, which is why I am in gym clothes, but Doris looks perfect, which is all that matters. I hope God can use it so that we can encourage other people to follow Jesus. Yes, amen. Amen. Exactly. That's my entire oh, prayer for, for this series, which is focusing on work. There's just so much of your story that I think is so inspirational, especially for young women today that feel God is calling them to start something. So could you maybe tell us a little bit about your journey in your own words? Like, how were you so sure that this journey was for you? And were you ever tempted to sort of pull back and say, no, I want a more comfortable life? Well, when I was 12 years old, there was a speaker from China in Seattle, and he, he said, will any of you come and help us? Because we don't know much about God over there, and everybody worship idols. And, and so how many of you are willing to go? And I raised my hand and said, okay, I was only 12. But my father taught us, if you make a promise, you have to keep it. If you promise somebody, you have to do it. So I promised God I would go to China. And everybody said, oh, she's 12. She doesn't know, you know. But later on, when I was 15, I read the Bible again and said, you know, ask of me and I'll give you the uh, world for your commitment. So I, I said, God, yes, I'll go. I still go. So I studied just to go to China. Now, I had made that promise. So when I was 21, I went to China. I could have stayed in the States. I could have studied music. But I already promised God I'd go to China. So I just have to remember, you know, that when you promise something, you have to do it. So and when I was 21, I got on a freighter and I went out to Shanghai and it was quite different at those days. But I was so glad I could go and tell them about Jesus. So from there, when I was in China, one year, because there was fighting going on, the communists were fighting them, and I evacuated from the communists three times. And they were shooting at the airport when I left Shanghai. And I went into Chengdu, Sichuan. And then I went up to Gansu. And that they were fighting at the airport when I left there. I could have stayed. And a lot of people stayed. But if you stay, your house arrests. You can't go out. So why stay there and you can't preach the gospel? So I got on a plane. Got on the last plane out and went to Hong Kong. And they worked there for a year and a half and helped all the refugees. And I played the trumpet in the Hong Kong Symphony Orchestra. And I went with the, out on the boats and taught the people about Jesus. But then I heard about Taiwan. I didn't know about Taiwan before. And they said that many people there needed Jesus. The communists said they were going to take Hong Kong anyway. So I got some people to go. I was in a mission called team and went over to Taiwan. 
Amazing. A long time ago. And everybody said, did you know you were going to stay there so long? I said, I don't know. I'm going to live so long. <laughs> actually, right now, today, I'm 96 years old. Oh, amazing. 96. I thought I'd never be 96, <laughs> but I'm still working every day, play my trumpet every day. I'm in my office. So, you know, keep on. Never mind if you get old, keep on. That's you know. amazing. It's that faithfulness. We don't know how long we're going to live. It could be another year. It could no. be another 50, 100 years. Yeah. And then we just obey. So as someone that has built such a large organization, could you maybe take us back to the very beginning? How did the whole process of starting ORTV and getting the first employee and sort of telling people about your vision, how did that all start? Well, I went out under a mission called Team, she had them away, and uh, you had to go on a mission. You couldn't just go by yourself. Now everybody can, but no, then you, you couldn't come if you didn't have some organization. So I went out under this mission, and uh, we saw there were so many people, and nobody went to church, only one-tenth of one percent Christian in time. Not even one percent. And the people weren't going to church because there weren't many churches. So the church has to go to them, you know. I mean, they're not going to go to church. There's very few churches. They don't know about it. But God said to reach out. And I know that if I started a radio program, because when I was in school, I, I played the trumpet on the radio programs, and I knew that you did. And I knew that one radio program in Asia can reach more people than Paul did his whole life. He went all over the place and he didn't, one program can reach those people. Wow. But everybody says, radio? No, there's no Christian radio here. No. But God said, I said, why doesn't somebody start it? And God said, why don't you start? I said, who, me? So I'm, I'm an American. I'm, I'm 21, 22 years old. I mean, how can I start? But God says, I will help you. So I started the radio program, the very first one, in 1951 in Taiwan. So that's kind of how we got started. Amazing. And was it fairly smooth once you started reaching out? Do you feel like God opened doors and it was quite easy to find people who believed in the vision? Well, and you know, when, when you're on the radio and everybody can hear you, and then we got a tape recorder and recorded it, and put the tape recorder at the station and played it so I could ride my bicycle and I could watch. And this, as our radio program was on, people in the temples were listening, mm -hmm. people in their homes were listening, the fishermen were listening along. And then, wow, all those people are not going to go to church, but they're listening to the radio program about Jesus. So you can reach so many people. They won't come to church. You go to them. Mm -hmm. You go where they are. And... And one time, when I was down in the East Coast in Wanyet, I was riding my bike, and somebody from the big temple, a, a nun came out. She said, come here. I said, who, me? You know, I mean, what does she want with me? And, and, and she said, where can I get a Bible? Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, she's a priestess in a temple. And she heard the Bible. She says, where can I get a Bible? So I knew that radio was a way to reach more people. Mm -hmm. Now, that's wonderful. I mean, truly the power of the technology. There are now more and more channels where it's easy to share the gospel. Maybe you could tell us your thoughts on the new generation, I guess, of social media channels. How would you encourage listeners to do like their version of riding down the street with the radio talking about Jesus? Well, we have to keep up with all the changes. Now, there's always changes in, in our life. There's changes in technology. You know, in fact, when I first came out to China, I came out in a boat, on a ship, a freighter. But now we go on airplanes and we get there in a hurry, you know, and everything changes. So we have to keep up. And if we keep up with what people are doing and we're on the web and they can see it on the web and they just, and you keep up. So even though I'm older, I still keep up. And some younger people, they said, oh, I don't know how to do the computer. I mean, I don't know how to do it. And I said, I learned it. You can learn it, see. In fact, when I was 56 years old, I learned scuba diving. Oh, 56. Wow. Because 
one of my teachers was a scuba diver teacher. She said, you have to learn. I said, okay, okay. So keep learning new things, no matter how old you are. And you have to reach out. And if you don't use the latest technology, you can't reach young people today. So now we have many different ways that we have of reaching on the web and like podcasts and we have mobile websites and, and so many ways. See, So we have to keep up with technology. And I like to keep up right now. Even though I'm older, I still keep up. I'm still talking to you. You, I mean, you inspire me so much because to be honest, my sister works for Meta, right? And they're all about the metaverse. And I just sort of dismissed it. I was like, I don't understand it. <laughs> Is it really useful? And then I saw that you were experimenting with it. I was like, everybody should. And I think it's how companies evolve. Like you're so, you're so right. If we do want to reach new generations, it's going where they are. Exactly what you said earlier. We can't expect them to come to us and, and keep our world, I guess, focused on ourselves, but really looking to where the need is. So just to say that I am very <laughs> inspired by you in many ways. I wonder if maybe you could tell us about some times where you felt God was stretching you, where something wasn't as easy, but you really just tried to obey. Well, yeah, there's many times like that, you know, and sometimes we feel we're not really qualified, but God qualifies us yeah. and he makes us qualified. If the world cannot always qualify you, but Jesus did. And so he, if he asks you to do something, he said, I will meet your needs and I will take care of you. And you have to believe those promises. And so you have to keep looking at the Bible because it's your guidebook. And it encourages you. And says, I will be with you wherever you go. When I first went up to the mountains in Taiwan with the tribes people, they were former headhunters. And nobody could go there without a permission. And I thought, well, I couldn't go up there. But, you know, God says, I will be with you. And so I went up there. And at night they looked at me and they said, oh, and I, I thought, oh, my goodness. And... You know, it was quite different, but it's still a challenge. And wherever you go, God will use you. And now I have a lot of friends in the tribes. I, I can speak the tribe's language, and I go there and they know me. So God will qualify you to do something you never knew you could do before. And I didn't know how to do radio. I didn't know how to do TV. Because when I first came here, there was no TV. Because they didn't even have it. But then when TV started... I thought we have to reach TV. And so when we started our first television program, we could go and look at the temples and the TV set in the temple. And here was our singers singing about Jesus and pre in the temple, right in the temple in front of the idols. And people were in the shops. Oh, here's television. And they were watching TV. So you have to use the latest things all the time. And God will help you, even if you don't know how. And you show you how to do it. I didn't know how. And and we didn't have enough money. I don't know how we're going to get money. We have to pay for a TV station. And so I had to go and visit people when I went back to the States and said, will you help us? And that was very hard for me to do. I was it? will you help us? You know. But I went to the Time magazine, Henry Luce. And then I said, and then he says, mm -hmm. I said, well, you know. And then his sister was the one that started a lot of Christians. So I had to go all those places, even if I didn't know how. But God gave me the courage, and he helped me. I was kind of bashful to do it, but I did it. And then God supplied the needs for us. So as we go along every day, he will supply our needs. Not our wants, but our needs. Yeah. That's so gutsy. I think sometimes I overthink and when I'm scared or nervous or fearful, I'm just stuck in that space for a little while. But I guess ultimately the conclusion is the same. Is that what you would say? That if we feel like God is leading us somewhere, we just have to try and trust that he will lead. That's right. Because he, he had a lot of promises in the Bible. See, that's a good thing about the Bible. He promises he'll be with us. And he says, if anybody lacks knowledge, I'll give it to him. Yes. And God, and God is a creator, and we're his, his creation. So we can learn from him. Yes. Amen. So creativity comes from God. Yes, absolutely. And he has so many endless ideas. So when I sent over some of our pre-interview questions, not sure if you get asked this a lot or publicly, but I think as someone that wants to serve 
with the Lord wholeheartedly, be like Paul, but also wants to be married. I read your testimony about how you um, gave up love. And I think when I wrote this question, I was also honestly just feeling a bit like, oh God, woe is me. Why is it taking forever? <laughs> um, but I'm wondering if I could ask you about that a little bit. Was it an easy decision that just the pull to serve God was so much stronger than the desire to be married? Or was there ever a time in your journey where... Um... Of course it was not, not easy. Yeah, because everybody, you know, I came from a big family, eight kids, and I wanted to have lots of kids. But a lot of the people that wanted to marry me, they wanted me to leave here and go back to the States. And I promised God I had commitment. And I promised him I would be here and I couldn't go back. So if they, I'm sorry, but I can't marry you and go back to the States. And they, they, they weren't going to stay here. So I thought I like to be a mother, but I didn't. Now everybody calls me Mama Doris all over the world. And I've got more kids now than I would if I had my own. Maybe maybe they're better. <laughs> maybe what is she hides away till peace deal. But anyway, uh, so. You know, God gives us the desires of our hearts. And a lot of people now call me Mama Doris. And even from Iran and Iraq and those countries. And I say, God bless you. And they say, Isha Allah, Mama Doris. See, so I can still be a mother, even though they're not my kids. Because when we get to heaven, they're going to be there. I'll have a big family. God Absolutely. says you're never alone. And he will be your friend. So you don't need to worry about it. You take care of it all your needs. We have to say Jesus and others and you. Jesus is first. Joy, J-O-Y, happy, joy. Jesus is first, others second, you are third. So Jesus is first. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach. Okay, okay. And others have to do with that. What do I want? You know, what's, what's number three? Jesus and others and you. What a wonderful way to spell joy. That's a song, and it's a good life challenge. Joy, Jesus and others in you. Jesus first. And a lot of people put their family first. Others, that's second, not first. So Jesus has to be first. And then he will show you the way. He'll be with you, and his promises will be there. Wow, it's great. You'll be happy. Yeah, it's so true. Sometimes we can overcomplicate things, but putting Jesus first, loving your neighbor second, <laughs> and trusting that God will supply all our needs. And you neighbors. have no time for you. Yeah. You're last. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind about you. <laughs> yeah. I would love to hear more about how you structure your time and, and spend time with God. Could you tell us a little bit about how you like to worship and, and spend time with God? Well, we have to remember that God is always there. And so yeah. if I driving my car. I need, I say, God, I need a parking place. Talk to him, you know. I mean, just like you would a friend. Yeah. And he's real. And so keep in touch with him all the time. But when I want to talk to him at night, I don't just always just read the Bible. I sing songs about him. And if you look at YouTube, there's a whole bunch of songs about Jesus. It matters to him about you. And, and you oh, God, you does. And so sing those songs to yourself, you know. And when you sing a song about Jesus, you say, Jesus, you're great. But you can sing it. You don't have to just say it. And so singing a song is a big help. I don't think music is the language of the soul. And you can talk to God through music. So play good music and listen to the music and worship him through the music. And, and talk to him anytime. You don't have to just have a big, long time. But anytime. And then when you memorize some Bible verses and say them over again, I like to sing them because it's easy to memorize. It's hard to memorize all the words, but if you sing a song over and over and over, then you can remember. So sing a lot of good good Christian songs too. Yeah, I think that's you such can, good advice. And, and that makes you feel close to God when you, when you sing those songs. Sing along with the YouTube people. So many songs. You can even find my YouTube, Doris Bohm YouTube. You can find my YouTube. Yes, definitely. You can sing. 
I will link it so we can all sing along. And it's a really good point. There's examples of people singing and writing songs and worshiping all, all throughout the Bible. And then with ORTV, it started with radio. Then there's a magazine. There's so many different channels now, including a lot of music. And then there's recently a musical about your life. How is that part of the culture? Like, it's- We usually have chapel every day, but right now because of the viruses and all, we do it online too, sometimes like that. But but we always put God first and we start the day, say, God, what do you want me to do today? And you know, sometimes people come to see me and they have needs. I have a schedule and I have to be on the radio and I'm on TV, but never mind, people are first. God loves people more than anything. So if people come with a need, don't put them aside and say, I don't have time. Have time for them. And and you have a schedule, but it's staffed together. Sometimes we say, here's somebody who needs it, and they come and pray for them. And we keep together like a big family, see? And uh, or TV's like a family, studio classrooms for them. And you can be part of the family, see? And we keep in touch with each other. And I think that's very important for us to realize that God is there every minute and just talk to him. Not just only when tonight is my devotion time. No. Hey, God, I need some help. God, I'm making a TV show. I don't have any ideas. Give me some ideas. Because he's the creator. I, and I try to think of new ways. And God, give me some creative ideas. I get some ideas. They say, oh, you're so smart. No, no. God, God showed me how to do that. So you have to trust him, see. And when you trust him, never let you down. He'll answer your prayer. If you have faith and believe, see. So I think that's very important, just to keep in touch all the time, not just one long period of time. Just in time to say, oh, God, I need you right now, okay? He's there. Yeah. And I think if we commit ourselves and say, you're a first in my life and I love you, that's good. And then God will feel very close to us, like he's with us all the time. He's our closest friend. And he's the only one who understands you. You know, even if you get married and people say, well, you don't understand me, how come? You know, nobody understands you very well, but Jesus, he knows you. He knows your thoughts, he knows. And people say, you're this, I say, no, no, God knows what I'm like. So he knows me and he knows you. And so be in touch with him, he's your best friend. That's so powerful. I, my prayer for this upcoming series that's focused on work is, that we can hear from women who have been through it and have kept God at the center and it's worked. Because I think if we think about starting a business now, we can be on Google, we can find a lot of resources and there's a lot of good advice out there, but a lot of it is not from a Christian point of view where God has kept at the center and a lot of it is your own effort and your own schedule and your own um, prioritizing and, and, and all of this. And, and those are important, but if we go back to God and others and then ourselves, and how do we love others? It's not harsh. Like sometimes business can be if it's just focused more on profits and things. But if we're truly caring about people, whether we are creating a stationary business or an NGO, it's it's being flexible, I guess, just to hear from God and to obey God and to be in constant touch with him so that we can rather than focusing on our on our own plans, I think is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. And, and you know, this is what, People don't really realize that, that God has a plan for their life. Now, some people say, I want to do this. I want to do that. And hey, what is God's plan? Not what's your plan. And don't have a, your plan and say, God, bless my plan. No. What is your plan? And so, Jesus, do you want me to do this? And and so, if you have, then you, what we say in Chinese, you'll never be sorry. Who mm-hmm. oh, means look back. And some people say, well, I wish I would have done that. I wish I would have. But you'll never say that. If you do what God wants you to do, you'll never look back and say, I wish I had done that. No. I did what God wanted me to do. So how can I, you know? And and it makes your whole life, your whole plan better because you're not doing your plan. See? And so God makes the plan and we do it. And we don't say, here's my plan. God bless my plan. I want to do this. No. That's very important. What do you want? Do you want me to do that? And he'll, he'll tell us. So that's wonderful. It's bad you feel that way. I just wonder if you could maybe close us for anyone that's listening that is really just wanting to soak in 
your advice. Is there anything that you would want to say to encourage any listener to continue to press on with God, even when it seems difficult, even when you don't see the fruit yet? Well, what people have to think of when you say you want to be a Christian, they say, does that mean you have to go to church or something? They don't know. People that don't know God, going to church does not make you a Christian. But the only thing is you have to say is, I want to know Jesus, see, and and when you go, when you leave this earth, someday we're all going to leave this earth. Where are you going to go? Oh, I don't know. And I said to somebody, do you have insurance? Yeah. In case you have an accident, you have insurance. But do you wait until you have an accident? No, you have it first. When you're going to leave the country, you know, go out of side of the country, you need a passport. Can you go to the airport and say, I don't have a passport. I want a passport. No, you have to get your passport now. So do you have your passport for heaven? Wow, how? Well, there's a book of life. It's called Shung Ming Shen, Book of Life. And it is my name written there. And when I leave this earth, if my name's there, the angels will take me up to heaven. But if my name is not there, there's no, you got to go to be with the devil. And say, ooh, what's be with the devil? That's terrible. That's scary. And But you have to get your passport. But you say, well, I don't know. You better take care of your passport before you want to go out of the country. Don't get your passport at the airport. So if you're listening in now and your name's not written in that book in heaven, you better get it in there now. That's your insurance for the future. It's not in the bank. Insurance is having your name there. So I'm going to pray for those people listening in right now, okay? And dear God, we know that you want everybody to go to heaven. You made it for us. You made it for them. So make everybody that's listening in today be sure that they're registered with their name in the book of life in heaven. And just if they don't know how, just say, God, help me to know you because you love them and you want everybody in heaven. You made heaven for everybody, for all of us, for people and not for the devil. It's for the devil and his angels. So we don't want to go there. So be with the people listening in. May they understand. If they don't, may they go and find out right away and be sure that they're insured to go to heaven when they leave this world. Thank you, Jesus, for making it possible for us by making us righteous, by dying on the cross for us. And we believe in you. And someday we're going to be there with you in heaven forever and ever. Thank you for salvation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your time, Doris. Thank you. It was nice to be with you. God bless you. God bless you.